Hello, my name is Ralf Schulz from the Institute for Environmental Sciences at the University of Koblenz-Landau in Germany. And I'm uh, going to talk today about chemicals in the aquatic environment. And I will do the first two parts of the talk, the first part on exposure and the second part focusing on effects and risk mitigation strategies. Hello, my name is Maggie Hieber-Ruiz. I'm also from the Institute for Environmental Sciences. And I will present the third part which will focus on the One Health approach regarding chemical, um, chemicals in aquatic systems. So I'm going to talk now about uh, chemical exposure. First of all, I would like to couple a, a few general things. If you think about critical uh, characteristics of environmental chemicals, this is uh, obviously a high toxicity, a high persistence and a high lipophility, so the tendency of a chemical to accumulate in the food chain. And this then uh, characterizes persistent bioaccumulative toxic substances, so-called PBT substances. Luckily, not all substances are having these characteristics out of the wide variety of substances that we are looking at. There is, for example, inorganic ions, organic chemicals, a very large group, organometals, nanomaterials, radioactive ions, and gaseous pollutants. And I'm going to talk here in, as, uh, in my talk today only uh, about a specific group of pesticides, particularly the insecticides, as an example. Before that, I would like to give you a quick introduction into the backgrounds of ecological risk assessment of chemicals, which is, at the end of the day, a relatively simple process. What you need to do for ecological risk assessment is you need to characterize the exposure side. So that means usually you apply models, mathematical models, to predict which concentration of a certain chemical may occur in the environment when this chemical is used for a particular purpose. And then, in comparison to the exposure, you also characterize the effects. So that means that you look at the potential effects of a chemical let's say for an aquatic system that you look in either in a laboratory experiment or in a field study, what are the potential effects of this chemical. And then at the end of the day you compare both the exposure and the effects side to assess the impacts of the chemical or the pesticide in the field. And what you do there is simply you compare exposure and effects and as long as your exposure concentration in the field is lower than the concentration at which you expect unacceptable effects, your risk is low and you can assume that the uh, potential effects in the field are not uh, unacceptable effects. Important is really that you try to assess the effects in the field and as such this uh, whole approach here is um, an approach that very much focuses on the field. Here you can see the exposure characterization and the effect characterization here on the other hand, as a typical example. So that means if you look at the effects from a field perspective, so more in a, in a retrospective approach in comparison to the prospective approach which f uh, predicts the potential effects of pesticides, you look in a retrospective approach which tries to survey potential effects of pesticides in the field, then you usually a focus on so-called field studies, which in this context here are really monitoring studies conducted under normal farming practice to describe exposure and effects on various response variables. But before looking into a, an example of a, such an exposure study, I would like to introduce to you a little bit what we know about the exposure of aquatic systems to insecticides. We did a while ago a study on that and, and found that the initial studies where insecticides mon were monitored in the field were conducted in Canada and the US and later on there were additional studies also in Europe and at a later stage also in other places in Europe, the US and in Japan. And this was more or less the picture that we had around the year 2000. So that means up to or until about 2000 we had hardly any information, almost no information on insecticide exposure in aquatic systems on the southern hemisphere. Although pesticides were used already on the southern hemisphere in extensive agricultural areas for many, many years. So generally 
our knowledge on the southern hemisphere is relatively low then since 2000 there were a couple of groups that looked at insecticide exposure in aquatic systems in some sites in Argentina, South Africa and in Australia mainly. But still our knowledge is relatively low, particularly for the southern hemisphere. That means I would like to give you an example also from the southern hemisphere, from South Africa, from the Western Cape, which is uh, um, strongly dominated by wine growing and fruit orchard growing area. Here you can see the, the Lawrence River, which flows here through this valley. And uh, there's a couple of tributaries uh, discharging into the Lawrence River, and these tributaries may be directly influenced by uh, non-point source pesticide uh, entries, as indicated here by the red arrows. So basically, what we did is we looked at the exposure which uh, may occur here for these tributaries, and then ultimately also for the Lawrence River. And there's two main entry routes of pesticides into the Lawrence River. One is spray drift and the other one is runoff. Spray drift means that uh, during the application of pesticides the spray particles, as you can see here, these white spray cloud, are transported by the wind towards the next surface water, which you can see here also on the left hand side of the picture as a small tributary of the Lawrence River. So what we did basically is we used a relatively simple sampling designed to monitor the spray drift deposition in a simple um, uh, glass um, beakers, glass uh, sampling units which were filled with water and therefore we were able to monitor the spray deposition either on the plot or on the next uh, on the surface of the next surface water and could thus um, estimate what amount of spray deposition we have in different distances from the plot and uh, found uh, results showing that there is for example spray drift anti here of azinfos missile, one insecticide, or endosulfan, another insecticide. Uh, in the tributaries here, as you can so, uh, see, azinfos missile in tributary V2 and endosulfan in tributary L2. And uh, during the uh, pesticide entry, you can also find certain concentrations, obviously lower ones due to the dilution, but certain concentrations of these insecticides in the Lawrence River as itself at the site LR3, which are higher than the background level of 0.01 microgram per liter, which you usually find in the Lawrence River. So what we then did is we used a lot of spray drift data and implemented and compared these data, not implemented, compared these data with modeled spray drift data. You can see the results here. On the y-axis, the measured Azinfos missile load, which uh, was uh, a result of our spray drift uh, sampling exercises in the field, and on the x-axis, the predicted Azinfos missile load. And there's a pretty good relationship between the two. So that means we can use the spray drift model, which is a regular model that is used for the risk assessment in, in Germany, for example. We can use this model also for predict spray drift in this catchment in South Africa. We also looked at runoff. So that means when you have very strong rainfall events, the uh, rain uh, water is washing pesticides, sediments and nutrients into the next surface water, as you can see here. And these surface waters are then usually pretty turbid and also may contain uh, nutrients and, and toxic compounds like pesticides. So here we also used a relatively simple uh, set of equipment. During rainfall we, we on the one hand uh, uh, the deployed samplers in the erosion rills between the plot and the surface water. So these erosion samplers then um, uh, sampled the erosion water. We had very simil uh, simple samplers also in the uh, surface water itself. On the one hand a, s a sampler that sampled the suspended particles and on the other hand a simple sampler that during high water, during elevated water levels in the tributary passively samples the water and this is particularly the water during uh, runoff events which is potentially uh, contaminated. So these runoff sampler, the flood event sampler during high water levels and the suspended particle samplers are all very simple systems which can be easily used in countries like South Africa for monitoring the pesticide during runoff events. <laughs>
When we did that, we found very, very high concentrations in the tributaries, in many tributaries, and mainly also at the outlet of the Lawrence River here at site LR3, concentrations up to 1.5 or 2.9 microgram per liter in the water, and up to 12,000 microgram per kilogram in the sediment. So these are really very, very high concentrations, particularly compared against the background, and these concentrations also exceed the guidelines that are existent in South Africa by a very, very high factor. So we also used this data then for the runoff measurements and implemented them or compared them with, an, with a runoff model. Once again here the measured data on the y-axis and the predicted data on the x-axis and you can once again see that there's a pretty nice relationship between the two. So these uh, information then from the spray drift uh, measurements and from the runoff measurements were then used and uh, to validate these models and after we have done that we used both models, the spray drift model and the runoff model and predicted the contamination that occurs at the catchment level. So the, here you can see uh, uh, schematic drawings of the whole uh, Lawrence River catchments with all the tributaries on, on the uh, right hand side the spray drift, on the left hand side the runoff situation and you can easily see that during spray drift there is up to about 6 gram of Azinfos missile that is leaving this whole catchment during the year while during runoff there is way more than 20 gram, in fact something like 46 gram of Azinfos missile leaving the whole catchment uh, on a yearly basis. And as you can also see as there are many many green plots marked here in the runoff slide, there's many more plots that contribute to runoff exposure than to spray drift exposure. So this result was somewhat surprising for us because we assumed that in an orchard area and a fruit orchard area spray drift is way more important but in fact we found that runoff is way more important for the insecticide entry into surface waters. So let me summarize what I showed you so far, pesticides are widely distributed in aquatic systems, not only in South Africa, there are many many findings also from other countries. There is simple and inexpensive yet still effective sampling procedures available which do not cost a lot and uh, which allow uh, to sample pesticides very effectively also in um, countries where there is not many technical equipment available. However, of course, the analyzes, the chemical analyzes of the pesticides involve certain equipment and it's not such an easy thing to do. But the sampling as a first step of the uh, monitoring is relatively inexpensive possible in, in, in many countries of the world basically. I also showed you that edge of field runoff is way more important for the pollution than for example spray drift. So in many countries and many situations we will have this, situ uh, this situation that you should focus on edge of field runoff in order to really find the peak events and of course edge of field runoff is a relatively short term event and it's due to heavy rainfall conditions so in some areas it might be just during certain parts of the year in other areas it might be throughout the year or larger parts of the year that you may have these uh, strong rainfall events which then lead to edge of field runoff. I also showed you that a remote sensing uh, data, spatial data coming from remote sensing exercises can help a lot to identify sources of exposure, pathways of exposure and hotspots. And last but not least, the concentrations that are usually found in surface waters indicate that biological effects are very very likely and that is what I'm going to talk about in another talk. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>